on down to San Antonio. Don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man. Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have Home Free, Folsom Prison Blues. This is a song from the mid 1950s by Johnny Cash. I just listened to the original a couple of times to refresh my memory because I'd kind of forgotten it. There's a film called Walk the Line, a biopic of Johnny Cash's life where Joaquin Phoenix plays Johnny Cash. I seem to remember this song from that film, so I'll just find it and show a quick clip. That there's rich folks eating in a fancy dining car. The original song, it, it's quite catchy. It's very good to sing along to. Johnny Cash performed this to some of the Folsom Prison inmates and that version reached number one in the country charts. It's a short, sweet song. The melody is taken from a much slower song, Crescent City Blues. I see the rich folks eating in that fancy dining car. For some prison blues, it's quite simple overall in terms of its infrastructure. So I'm curious to see how Home Free treat it. Are they going to stick true to the original or are they going to make things a bit more complex somehow? We know Home Free love their filthy, good filthy chords in certain arrangements. I can't necessarily see them doing it in this song without changing up the arrangement quite significantly, but you never know with these arrangements. So I think without further ado, let's get straight into it. Yeah, okay, I did not know what to expect here. This is fun. I, I really like what they've done here. The video as well, great video, isn't it? Not complex at all, just, just fun and, and the way that they just have these little differences, like the mug shots, side profiles, all that kind of thing. All right, well, even though it doesn't sound like there's too much variety in there, I think there's probably still quite a lot to talk about. So if you don't want to hear me go over the analysis, here's your chance by skipping to the timestamp here. So first things first, as usual, let's talk about the keys. The original song is in F major, home free start in E minor. The original song, the opening. I hear the train are coming. It's rolling around a bend. Being in a major key, being happy and really quite bouncy and energetic is interesting considering the subject matter. The lyrics really are quite sad about someone being locked away. A minor or sadder musical setting surely seems more fitting. Well, that's the approach that Home Free go for. All of the notes that they're singing in this introduction outline this chord, which is the chord of E minor seven. <laughs> I want to notate this in music terms to show you, so cue Sahelis from the future to discuss that a little bit. So here we have the music, the four parts that we hear. And to really see how these two parts are divided into two, Chance, Tim, and then Robin Austin are these two. And as I said before, every single note that we get here is all part of that E minor seven chord. So as we saw there, Tim and Adam have the drone notes in the bass. 
Tim takes a chance to breathe and then comes in on the same note. Chance doesn't. He stays all the way through. This difference between them adds a tiny bit of subtle rhythmic variety, but also, I feel, it creates this slightly agitated feel. Also in their two parts, we get the only notes that aren't technically part of that E minor 7 chord, and that's their chromatic notes here. <laughs> These are just called passing notes. They don't contribute to our assessment of the overall harmonic foundation at that moment. And chromaticisms are very bluesy. Like me, you might also find that this opening has a bit of an eerie feel, that something isn't quite right. That's because of the intervals between the two pairs. Tim and Chance are in fifths, so singing five notes apart, and Austin and Rob in fourths, four notes apart. Tim and Chance, and Rob and Austin, these two intervals, a fifth and a fourth, they're considered more archaic than, for example, a third. These intervals they're using, they go back many, many, many centuries in Western music. The fourth, fifths moving in parallel motion was known as organon. So to me, it always sounds a bit strange when it's that exposed like that. Overall, the intro to me is very, very interesting, eerie, almost a bit outdated. It has a lot of suspense in it through slight agitation. It's different to the original song, that's for sure, and it got me wondering what is going to happen with the rest of the arrangement. Austin then comes in very, very high up right at the top of a classical tenors range to give a bit more of a modern feel through this sustained note. <laughs> little vocal runs as well. And in terms of the beats, I like how we have clicks in addition to Adam's other effects. These clicks, I don't know, there's something foreboding about them almost. Maybe I've been watching a bit too much West Side Story. I wouldn't even be surprised if the clicks are actually done by Adam's mouth and they've just put it in using multi-tracking. They do a very nice transition from the eerie, strange introduction part into the melodic lyric line. It's a sequence of more harmonically stable chords. <laughs> And then we arrive at the melody, which is now major, like the original song. However, we're now in E, instead of the original, which is F. So just a tiny bit lower. Chance has the melody, which is perfect for, I think, it's slightly more raspy, not that angelic of a voice. And he's supported by the sustained chords, like we had in the introduction, and then with Austin coming in with his ah, uh, ahs. And I ain't seen the sunshine since, I don't know when. Compared to the original, which has a guitar strumming rhythmically and a double bass and a quicker beat, this is quite different. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know where. The BPM, the beats per minute of the original song, is a fair bit higher. The original song, roughly 110 or so. And Home Free, around 92. So Home Free, through their musical choices so far, are playing to this slightly slower tempo, downbeat version. It's very fitting. The lyrics here, time keeps dragging on. Time keeps dragging on. Now in harmony too, not just one melodic line, which reinforces the words they're singing, giving them a bit more of an oomph. And I like how now the melodies in the whole major thing, we do switch back to the same eerie introductory motif. Oh. Outlining that E minor seven chord. Then everyone comes off and we get this descending motif that's so typical of blues music. On down to San Antonio. And then being in a lower key than Johnny Cash slightly, Chance gets to sink that tiny bit lower. Then it's Tim's turn to take over. Nice. Always be a good boy. Don't ever play with girls. Very nice there. The chords we have on Don't Ever Play. Nice little bit of dissonance there and everything else is removed to highlight that. These are important lyrics too. They're the advice his mama told him that he chose to ignore and then ended up spending years in prison. Then the next part, we get these lyrics. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. I read that Johnny Cash wrote these because he was trying to think of the worst reason to shoot someone is, and that's what he came up with. And if you think about it, it's really dark and horrific. So Home Free, his kind of tongue-in-cheek, chosen to add in an arguably very jolly sounding echo. Not a man in Reno, just to Harmony in thirds and echo in Reno. In Reno. It's almost like a mimic repeating someone to ri ridicule them or mock them. And then again, quite humorously, the background. Didn't realise Rob was six foot eight and Chance was five foot. It's nice silly humour from them, I like it. This is another time where everyone comes off to allow for the descending bass vocal lines to shine. Ooh, that rhymes. And just like before, Rob changes his note on the last do. Blowing, I hang my head and cry. So what I mean by Rob changing his note? Well, before that, we have this chord. A nice standard B chord. But on the last note, Rob goes to here. 
This is called a dominant seventh. All that means is after we get this chord, we are then expecting to move down five notes. As we're in B, we move down five, which takes us to here. Down the octave is what Tim finishes on. Hang my head and cry. This bit. Again, lovely from Austin. He really has a crazy voice in those upper ranges. It's that weirdly wonderful blended sound, but it almost doesn't sound blended as well. It's very unique. It's quite sad to hear that he's going to be leaving. And then just before we paused, we got this bit on three, four years to go. It kind of sounds a bit syncopated. There's definitely a more energized feel to it. I got three, four years to go. The part singing three, four years to go are actually just singing perfectly on the beat as regular as it can possibly be. Three, four, one, two. It's the swinging ooh, 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 ooh parts underneath that we've become so used to hearing because it's the first thing we hear in the introduction and they've been singing it for a lot of the performance. It's these that make the regular parts seem more interesting than they are, especially rhythmically. All right, let's continue now to the end. Tell me what I got to do. I've met there's rich folks eating in a fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars But I know I had it coming I know I can't be free No, I can't be free, no But those people keep on moving And that's what tortures me If they freed me from this prison, if that railroad train was mine, bet I'd move it on a little further down the line. Far from Folsom Prison, that's where I'd want to stay. And I'd let that lonesome whistle blow my blues Well, that was a fun one. I did not know what to expect there. I love how in the video as well, they each have their own kind of different personality. Chance, pretty chill. Adam definitely looked the most unhinged there. Austin, just a bit animated. Yeah, fun video, great arrangement. A bit more to talk about there, so we'll go over that now. So we get this couple of lines. That there's rich folks eating in a fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars. Those lyrics there are probably my favourite part of the song. I bet there's rich folks eating in a fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee or smoking big cigars. Now, believe it or not, I wasn't quite alive in the 50s or 60s, not just yet. And there are no doubt a lot of cultural differences between then and now that I will be completely unaware of. But as far as I am aware, coffees and cigars were not some kind of delicacy. Cigars are significantly more expensive than cigarettes, so I may be wrong about cigars. Do let me know if that's the case. But these words, they're fun to me out of every item you could choose to talk about that rich folks would be doing i wouldn't pick these two especially not the coffee part it is clever lyrics by johnny cash really showing just how bad they had it locked up in prison in crescent city blues the one i played in the introduction that johnny cash used for this song they used the lyrics pheasant breast and eastern caviar instead so maybe it's just me who really likes these lyrics and it's also this part where home freed choose to put the first real bit of variety in the arrangement now smoking big cigars everything else comes off and then again we get that descending bass riff this time slightly melodically adjusted and the other parts providing harmony are not descending. And smoking big cigars, but I'm a nice little homophonic section. Then we get I know I had it coming, which is the first sign of some nice scrunchy chords. But I know I had it coming. In those flowing ooze in the background. And then the words, no, I can't be free. In Rob, this is the first element of bluesy freestyling. And again, repeating words, I can't be free. Quite powerful words. No, I can't be free, no. Adam, you know, a real backbone in this arrangement in particular. Nice to see his no moniker appearing again. 
I still can't believe he produces that with his mouth. Mad. On the words, tell me what I got to do, we get a nice homophonic scrunch chord. Tell me what I got to do. What was that chord there? We had Tim who was singing a B, but off this keyboard, unfortunately, but it's down there. And then... And if we move these notes all next to each other, we get this. Scrunchy. In the original song, there's not that much textural variety. Here for Tim's solo later on, Home Free decide to reduce the texture. Freed me from this prison, the bad railroad train was mine. Tim's moved down the octave for his melody, Chance is covering the bass. Austin's repeated ah, ah is still there, ever present, the real MVP. And this textural reduction means fewer parts, which means Adam's vocal effects stand out a bit more. It kind of reminds me of the chicka 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 of a train. Train was mine. But I'd move. Maybe I'm influenced by the lyrics if that railroad was mine. And we had Adam moving away a bit like a train. And I'd live that. All right, and then we get probably the standout moment. And I'd live that lonesome whistle. I'm thinking he's going down from here, isn't he? He's he's not going to go up the octave. He's going down. Blow my blues just for context, this is one octave below what is known in the choral world as a bottom E. The bottom E is this note. And that's really the lowest your bass is expected to sing. So Tim is a whole octave below that. If I remember correctly, this is also the same note as the lowest note Jeff went in my first ever voice play reaction, Nothing Else Matters. Blow my blues I hope there's someone watching this with crazy speakers that has just vibrated their whole desk or room even. Right, and then we approach the end and we get the nice swinging repeated motif phasing us out. That whole phase out section is like an amalgamation of the variations and differences we've heard previously. They've all come together now. All the different motifs we've had before are now all being sung at the same time, obviously helped through the use of multi-tracking. And previously in this performance there's been multi-tracking as well, it's not strictly five part. We have sustained drone bass notes like we got at the start and throughout. We have more chromaticisms and individual lines. Austin's high riffs. The no Monica. And yeah, speaking of Adam, I mentioned earlier, but he, he just looks the most unhinged out of all of them in this. I think he's been given the slightly local character. The only thing really missing from this phase out is one of Rob's bluesy freestyle type repetitions. Yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, that was a fun one, wasn't it? That was a fun one. Whilst very different to the original song, it was also very similar in the sense that the original song is fairly repetitive and there's not too much going on. Home Free really honed in on this repetition, but one of the most repeated things was that eerie introduction, which just added this element of interestingness to the overall harmonic foundation. Nice rhythmic variety in there, little bits here and there, switching up the octaves. Overall, pretty good performance, I think. Very happy with that one. Alright, thanks to everyone who recommended that one and as always thank you very much for watching, would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me and join the community and take part in future polls you can do so by joining the YouTube memberships or Patreon linked in the description below and I will see you next time.